We're tag teaming tonight. Um, Brian might have made a mistake. He said I'd go first. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be real brief. I've only got five points. And I thought he was going to have a heart attack. But uh, tonight, you know, the first thing I wanna, we want to talk about for just a few minutes is how can the church help their deacons? And I hope you thought about that. I hope you'll think about that. I hope God's word will challenge you. When I think of a deacon, my first thought of it is of a servant. A deacon is somebody that serves others. And, and thankfully, Jesus set that model for us. Uh, Matthew chapter 20, uh, verses uh, middle of 26. Aaron, you with me? And uh, through 28. 20, uh, Matthew 20, verse 26 through 28. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Every good deacon that I've known is a servant. And uh, we're blessed to have servants in our church and tonight to add uh, three more men to that category of servants. So I'm thankful for that. There are five things, seriously, I want to share with you briefly. Um, number one is, <laughs> he's smiling briefly. He likes that word. The, best, the most important thing you as a church can do for your deacons is to pray for them. They, they need to have a sense of godly wisdom to be the leaders that God has called them to be. So I challenge you as a church. You want us to be successful? You want us to grow? You want us to minister to others? You want to see souls saved? Then you pray for your leadership. Right. You, you pray for your pastors. You pray for your deacons. You pray for your Sunday school teachers. Yeah. But tonight we're talking about deacons. Pray for them. Pray for their wives. They serve together. And sometimes they sacrifice evenings and mornings and, and afternoons and whatever to serve. And I challenge you to do that. And James, other places we're said, we're told to pray for one another. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes we forget that our leaders are real people with real needs and real problems. And, you know, sometimes they get their feathers ruffled. And sometimes, um, you know, they, they get their feelings hurt. But, but they're real people, and they're servants. Pray for your leaders, number one. Number two, let me encourage you to encourage your deacons. Be an encourager. You know, nothing is more um, important for me in life and working with people is try to encourage others. You know, make them feel like uh, that, that what they're doing is important and that you are there for them. Throughout the New Testament, we're told to be encouragers. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Thessalonians 4, encourage each other. Hebrews 3, encourage one another daily. Hebrews 10, but let us encourage one another. They need encouragement as they deal with spiritual leadership, and they need encouragement as they deal with the practical problems in the church. And uh, I think those things are important. A note, a phone call, a pat on the back, we appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate your service. You know, I came to church this morning. We've had a little problem with their heat. And over in the other building, it was, it's been, last week it was freezing in the basement and the sanctuary. So I asked one of our deacons if he'd just check on it. So I got over this morning, and you could fix toast down there, you know. I mean, it was great. But that's a servant. You say, hey, that's, that's not important. Yes, it is important. When the baby's room's cold, that's bad. So that man knows how much I appreciate them, and, and I want to thank him. Pray for each other. Pray for your deacons. Encourage your deacons. And be there to support your deacons. You know, one thing I've learned in the last two or three years is there are real people here with real problems that have to be dealt with sometime. And they need your support. And you may not agree with it all the time. You may not like it all the time. But support your deacons. Support your leaders. You know, there may be family issues. There may be something going on within the body of the church with 500 people that things are not going well. And uh, so when, when tough times come, Brian and I ask them to get involved. No jokes. We need their help because it, it calls for confrontation. Sometimes it's not really comfortable. Support them because they need that spiritual discernment. There's a need for, for personal care, uh, for spiritual clarification sometimes, and there's a need to address personal concerns. I think deacons especially need to be peacemakers within the church. Let me say that again. They need to be peacemakers within the church. Pray for each other. Pray for your deacons. Support your deacons. And then encourage your deacons. And the fourth thing I would say is 
Um, our deacons are great support for your pastoral staff. Amen. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes people say, well, I was in the hospital and nobody came to see me. Did you let anybody know? Well, no. Did you call the church? No. And I understand sometimes people just want to be left alone. That's fine. But, but let your deacons know when there's a personal problem, when there's somebody that's uh, sick and in the hospital, when there's been a death in the family or the community, when somebody has a financial need that can't be met. Just a few weeks ago, we had a family who's been dear and ne near and dear to our church for many years. There was a financial need. There was a, 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 a utilities bill. One phone call and it was done. Your deacons are there. So th they're there to be a great support to your pastoral staff. And I, I, I tell you, your pastor and myself and others would not be near as effective without the men that we have around us to, to support us. Um, you might have a suggestion of something that needs to be corrected, something that needs to be adjusted, something that we could do more effectively, a problem that needs to be solved, somebody that needs a visit. Tell one of your deacons. Tell one of your deacons because they're a great support for your pastoral staff. And then I would say, fifthly, help your deacons to be problem solvers. Problem solvers. You know, when you have a group of 500 people, which we do on a Sunday morning, there's always going to be a need somewhere. And there's going to be a problem somewhere. And we're not going to all agree on everything. In fact, I don't agree with myself all the time. So, you know, we... we we asked our deacons to come in and help us and to be problem solvers. So, you know, as a church, what can you do? These five things. I want to challenge you as a church to reach out to your deacons and do these things. Number one, pray for them. That's, that's the most important thing you can do. Number two, encourage them. Be there to encourage them. Number three, support them in their leadership role. That's so important. Number four, so help understand that they are great support for your pastoral staff. Inform them of things going on and ways they can help. And then fifth, help them become problem solvers. Problem solvers. Because that's, that's a part of who they are and, and what they do. Um, as I looked over some things this week, there, there are a lot of things written to challenge deacons to be servants. But I couldn't find much written to a church to, to support your deacons. But I came across one paragraph. And forgive me, I copied it. Let me share this paragraph with you. I paraphrased it just a little bit. It says this. We never need to play the blame game in church, but to deal with needs, issues, and problems openly. Openly. And make them a matter of prayer. When there are needs, and there will be, we need to work together to find godly solutions. And your deacons do that. And these three men joining this body will do that. In order to do this, we need to select spiritually mature, godly leaders who will take their responsibility seriously and are trusted by their church and in their community. And as we recommended these three men, we had the total assurance that they were godly men, they were spiritually sound, and that they were well respected. First and foremost, as a church, we need to find ways to continue to share the message of Jesus Christ and through, and through our church to help Christians grow in their walk with Christ. And that I think every deacon that we have, I've gotten to know, and they know these two things are, are paramount in their task. Number one, to share Jesus. Number two, to help Christians grow together. So let me, let me encourage you to do those things. Pray, encourage, support. Uh, work with your pastoral staff and to make your deacons aware of needs around you because they are concerned. They are concerned, but they need to know what those things are. And I think the most important thing for us to remember is we are a team. That's right. And every team has a leader. We have a pastor. And then every team has to have a role. Every member on the team has to have a role to play. As a church, let me encourage you to do those five things beginning with prayer because your deacons need your support in order to be the leaders that God has called them to be. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Thank you all for being here tonight. That song really sums up ministry. I'll praise you in the storm. You know, a lot of people 
will give you a fluff idea of what ministry really is, but I've come to shoot you straight tonight. There's uh, good days, bad days, and hard days, and days you want to close the Bible and give up and just uh, go about your way. That's truth. Uh, the truth is that ministry can be ugly. Ministry can really be ugly sometimes. Uh, but saying that, I have to say, I am so thankful that God called me to be a pastor. I am so thankful of all the things that I could be doing tonight. I get to hold the Word of God Amen. in my hand, and I get to be a bread breaker. And I get to tell people about the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I get to tell everybody about the greatest name, the greatest man that has ever lived. God trusts me with that. And you as deacons who are getting ready to be ordained and set aside, this is not just a position in the church that has a title. I think a lot of churches get that confused. I think a lot of churches have boss men instead of God men. I think a lot of churches have people who want control. But that is not the true meaning of a deacon. A true deacon, probably one of the most humblest positions in a church that you could have. A, a deacon is a, uh, is a servant. And tonight, I want to give you a word that God has given me. I probably won't be as quick as Haywood. <laughs> but we will break the bread. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 says these words. And listen to this. This is the, the outline. This is the, what God says that a deacon should be. Now, we all know, listen to me, we all know that what I'm getting ready to read, you're not perfect in this. Now, I'm going to show you something. There's a bunch of qualifications, Tommy, that God gives in these verses. Watch this. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8 says, A deacon, likewise, are to be men worthy of respect. Sincere, not indulging in much wine. Let me go ahead and just break it down Kentucky style. Stay away from it. Because it's a bad reputation. It's just the way it is. You, just, you need to stay away from that stuff. Why in the world would you want to be a part of the leading cause of teenage deaths today anyway? Preach it. It says these words. It says he must be sincere, not indulging in too much wine. And not pursuing dishonest gain. Listen, verse 9. They must keep hold of the deep truths, listen to this, of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested. They must first be tested. The Bible says, do not raise a novice. A novice is someone who is young and then the church has been in, in a, in, in, in doing bad because what they would do, they would place somebody who was young, who just got saved, and they would put them in a spiritual position for a defeat. Because we realize that if you're not, it's, it's hard enough with mature in Christ, been saved a long time, and placed in a, uh, a spiritual position, and all of a sudden someone who has just been saved and put them in a spiritual position that they have no idea about. So I have good news for the people here tonight. These men that we are presenting as deacons to you tonight have been tested. We put something called an Aaron ministry together here at this church. And what this Aaron ministry does, we pick these men who are already doing the work of a deacon. You look around and you find people who are already doing the work of a deacon. You go up to them and you say, hey, I want you to pray about this. We asked them to pray about this position. They came on board. They set into some meetings. I'm going to be honest with you. After some meetings that they went through, I am surprised they're here tonight. Hallelujah. That's true. You see, the, the, the problem with churches today is this. We put a fake a facade on thinking that everything is good. But I'm telling you in leadership, you hear about the good, you hear about the bad, and you hear about the ugly. You hear things that if you're not honest, with honest gain in your life, and if you have a problem called this, you're not going to make a good deacon. You're not going to make a good deacon. So tonight, he, he said these words. Listen to this. It's this word. They, they first must be tested. And then if there is nothing against them, let them serve as a deacon. Let them serve as a deacon. In the same way, listen to this, their wives. I want to stop just for a moment because you hear about deaconship. You hear about all these other positions of a church. But I'm going to tell you something. Either your wife will make you or break you. 
That's true. And that's why we need to pray. You need to pray for your, the, the, the wives because here's one th thing we do at this church that a lot of people don't understand. But we allow the women to minister to the women and the men to minister to the men. Because watch this. I don't know about you, Tommy, but I don't understand women. Come on, bunch of chickens. You know that's truth. You don't understand them either. That's why if you get a woman, let the older women, the elderly women, take care of the younger women, you'll have a biblical concept of the Bible. And it works great. Because I'm telling you, sometimes I'm sitting there going, what were you thinking? I don't know. I was going to tell you a joke, but I'm not. I'm going to try to stick with this. Look what he said here. In the same way, the wives are to be women. Listen to this. Worthy of respect. A leader goes above and beyond. When nobody else wants to go above and beyond, a leader will be the last one to leave and the first one there. A deacon will turn on the lights and a pastor will shut them off. They work together as a team. It's a ball and glove. And I'll be as only good as the leadership is. If they allow me to be pastor, we'll thrive. We just won't survive, but we'll thrive. But if we got good leadership, you'll grow God's ministry. Same way the wife started to be worthy of respect. Not malicious talking, but temperament and trustworthy in everything. Listen to this, verse 12. A deacon must be the husband but of one wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well, listen, get, will gain an excellent standing as a great assurance of their faith in Christ Jesus. Tonight I want to give you something the Lord gave me because I think we're, we're really confused about deaconship and where's deacons at, this, that, and the other. Watch this. This is not my church and this is not a deacon's church. This is God's church. Anytime you take control and say, it is mine, you're going to get your feelings hurt. You're going to get in trouble. That's why a lot of churches are in trouble because they think they own that church, they control that church, and you got people in a spiritual leadership position that really, to be honest, we don't need to be there. Oops. It's the truth. It's an honor to be here tonight. Now, I'm grateful to preach this because these men mean so much to me, them and their families. Um, I've been crying. I'm tore up from the floor up. I'm excited about this, and I, I, I want to I wanna share something with you that God truly gave me. Where did a deacon come from? Deaconship is a, is a New Testament principle. The problem was, was this, on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people got saved. Evidently, that wasn't too good for Jesus. 5,000 got saved the next day. The first church had 8,000 members and one pastor and seven deacons. And you look at this concept and you're sitting there going, wow, how did they do it? They didn't. They didn't do it well. That's why the churches started distributing and going. You got the church of Thessalonica and Corinth and Ephesus. You got all these churches under the umbrella of the church of Jerusalem. And I say that to tell you these words. The word deacon is a New Testament principle. See, the pastor couldn't serve. He couldn't do it all. So he had to have help. He had a glove on, but he had to have, he had to have his deacons out there doing some work too. The deacon's work is to take care of the widows and the orphans of a church. It is. The deacon's responsibility is to be humble, to be a servant, take care of the orphans, and to take care of the widows. You ought to wait on tables, is what the Bible says. I wrote this down. The word deacon translated means a table waiter. Listen to this. This is a good word for y'all. The word deacon literally means, listen to this, to kick up dust. Now, I want y'all to think about this. The word deacon translated means to kick up dust. What's this? This is the image of a servant working, a deacon working so hard and moving so fast, all you see is the dust kicking up. That's the true meaning of a deacon. That they're here, they're there, they're everywhere. And so, so many churches have, they're off scale right now because they're sitting there going, I got to have my pastor. Listen to me, I'll teach you something. The pastor was never, never set aside and ordained by God to run the church. He wasn't. The church was set up with leadership. 
you got Jesus the head, then you got the under shepherd, the pastor, then you got his he got his deacons, and then you got the body. That's the way it is. But anymore, it's like if they don't have the pastor, they get mad. I don't know where that came in from, but it's true. Deacons are to be men controlled and led by the Spirit of God. Listen to me. You are to be completely, completely consumed in, in, in the love and in the, in the covering of God. And if you do that, I want to show you something. If you are consumed and Spirit-led as a deacon, here's exactly what you will produce in your life. Y'all ready for this? It's amazing. It's good. Look here in Galatians chapter 5. Aaron, you have that? Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22 and 23. If you are led by the Spirit, you're going to produce fruit. See, I'm a fruit inspector. I am. People call themselves Christians, but they act like hell. That's not, that's not the church. That's not a deacon. That's not a pastor. But watch this. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? So if you are consumed by God, you're under his umbrella, you're being worked by his spirit, you're going to produce his fruit. Whatever's in you, watch this, not just for a deacon, but it's all of us, whatever is in you will eventually come through you. Whatever you're hanging around is what's going to come through your life. The word deacon means to attend. Watch this. To attend. To minister to the ministries of the church. Number two, it means to wait upon, to be a servant. What's this? Jesus Christ himself, the King of Kings, says, I did not come to be served, but I come to serve. Boy, if the church could ever get that mentality. If the church could ever just get the mentality that I am not here for you to serve me, I, as your pastor, I am here to serve you. Isn't it something? Y'all like that, don't you? But what if I told you the same thing? You're not here to serve me. I'm here to serve you. Same thing. We're here to serve each other. And we're better. How many of you know it's a blessing in serving? Man, I'm telling you, it is a blessing in serving people and, and blessing in watching people grow in the, in the Word. Deacons are to minister too. I wrote this down. There's a checklist for a deacon. I, this is my personal thing that I want to give every deacon, every ordained man in this, in this room tonight. A checklist for a deacon. Number one, check your heart. Die daily. Tommy, check your heart every day. Mark, every day check your heart. It's easy to do in here sometimes. It's, it's that when you're out there. When you don't get your parking spot at Walmart. And it's so easy to get all messed up. But check your heart. Gary, every day check your heart. Die daily. Die daily. Turn your neighbor and say die daily. Come on, die daily. I know it's a deacon ordination. We're going to have a little church. Die daily. you got to die daily. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's all about him. And when we start dying the way we think church ought to be, the way everything should be, the way we think it should be, we'll start, I'm telling you, we'll start living. Number two is check your attitude. i got a, I got a little saying that I do even in, in the office over here. Pray, would you remember this? If we're having a bad day, I'll look at one of my staff members and I'll say, attitude check. Praise the Lord. That's what it is. If somebody's having a bad day at the office, guess what we get to do? Attitude check all day long. All day long. So we're going to practice here tonight. Y'all ready? Because some of you look like you've been sucking on a lemon all day. Y'all ready? Attitude check. Come on, attitude check. Attitude check. Tommy, attitude check. When things ain't going your way and you have a bad day and you don't want to be a deacon no more, attitude check. Praise Lord. Say, Brian, you shouldn't think like that. That's the way it is. Why in the world would I get up here and lie to y'all tonight? Puff the magic dragon. Everything's good. We're Southern Baptists. We don't have no problems. Right. That was a lie, and I'll be the first one at the altar tonight. But that's the way church people think. I'm here to tell you, tell you tonight to praise him in the storm. 
I'm here to tell you tonight, when it don't look too good, you've got to find a place where yes, you meet Jesus every day and you die daily. Attitude check, praise the Lord daily. I'll preach myself happy daily. I'll praise Him when nobody else is going to praise Him daily. Hello? Amen. Every day, it's the way it is. Prayer time and study time. You've got to have your prayer time study time. What kind of deacon would you be if you don't never read your Bible except in, during Sunday school? You must read the Word of God daily. It's my bread. Man don't live by bread alone. He lives by every word that proceeds from his mouth. i got to have it. I want you to hear me. To do this, you must guard your hearts against anything that would come in and push Jesus aside. Anything. Anything that, that will push you away from that right there. you gotta, you got to think about it every day. Anything like power and authority and control and greed and hurt. I thought about this too, Tommy. This is my thing here because I, I just love this. I, I worked for Overhead Door Company for about seven years. I worked for Camelsville Industries for about five. And in 1997, God got a hold of my heart. And he called me into full-time ministry. I didn't know what I was doing. Still don't know what I'm doing. All I know is that the grace of God was upon me. And all I knew is I loved Jesus Christ. That's all I had for me. I, went, I couldn't preach. Tried to be T.D. Jakes, and I found out I was white and he was black. <laughs> I tried to be something that I wasn't. I tried to fill somebody else's shoes. I tried to act like people that, that, that this was not me. But here's where I found out that God could use me. If I could just be Brian and fall madly, deeply crazy in love with God every single day of my life, he could use that kind of man if you'll just bow down. Somebody praise him in this house. You just bow down. God could have called me to be a welder. God could have called me to, to be put on steeples. God could have called me to work at Windstream, which he did with you, but you're just part-time now. Because I'm telling you guys, and Bob, you can testify. The more you get closer to God, the more you want to give him. The more you want to give him. He could have called you to do anything. But God called you, Gary Reynolds, to be a deacon. Mark, my goodness. Start out at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church. And look where God's brought you from. Here you are today, madly crazy, deeply in love with God. Can't get enough of him. Got his right arm hanging out your ear, his left arm hanging out at your ear. You just can't get enough of him. I'm proud of you. Gary, I'm proud of you. Tommy, I'm proud of you. Not everybody's called to be a deacon. But this, I want you to hear me tonight. This is not just a position. This is not just a title. This is an ordained New Testament concept that's got to be in the church today. If we're going to work, you've got to work the ministry. Missy and Renee and Annetta, I'm going to charge you tonight too. Because so often we think it's always the men. But I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the women, I'm going to say this so many times in my ministry, but it's so true. If it wasn't for godly, spirit-filled women, for the mamas and the grannies and your wife standing up when you didn't stand up and push you to read your Bible when you didn't want to read your Bible and go to church when you didn't really want to go to church and praise Him when you really didn't want to praise Him and you got a good wife behind you, she'll kick Jesus in you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. She will. She'll push you to be the best. And Missy and Renee and Annetta, that's exactly what your men of God are going to need. They're going to need women when they come home from a bad business meeting and they don't feel like they're even just doing nothing else. You're going to say, honey, it'll be all right. Get up and go get them again. They're going to need your support. They're going to need you to love them through it all. Poor Dana. Only one woman. I don't know how she puts up with me. <laughs> That's right. It's true. I'm done with this. Don't forget the godly order. Listen to me. Here's a godly order. If you want a house that's going to be full of Jesus Christ, if you want a home that's going to have God all in it, all over it, not just a happy home, but a holy home. See, we need holy homes. We need homes that puts Jesus first back in the house. 
Even before you eat, pray. Hallelujah. Before you lay down, pray. When you get up, pray. Hallelujah. You can go to the bathroom, pray. Whatever you got to do, pray. But here's the godly order. God first. Everybody say, God first. What does that mean? You know, it's easy to say that. But when I think about that, that means this. I used to be out of order. Because I love the church more than I love my wife. I was out of order. That phone would ring. I don't care if grandma stumped her toe. I'd go. Left my wife, I'm not lying to you and ask her, left her in Eat Town one time to go home to visit some man. When I got there, listen to this, the family wasn't even there with her. They left because the preacher was coming in. I learned something that night, Barry. I'm going to stay with little mama. And you say, Brian, what if they get mad? They'll get over it. God first, family second. Y'all listen to me. God first, family second. Church third, work fourth. If four becomes two, you're out of order. It's the truth. That's a biblical principle. God first, family second. Mark, right after Jesus Christ is Renee. I don't care what any pastor ever tells you. And she ought to say amen to that. Did you hear him pull his ear? Whatever you got to do. Right there, I'm on the hem of his garment. Don't you let go. But I'm telling you, because here's what y'all are going to be challenged with. Meetings, visitation, phone calls. I'm not going to lie to y'all tonight. It's going to be up to here. And if you're out of order, you'll be stressed out. Then you go into panic mode. And then you get rude and mean. And then you say things you shouldn't say. Then you tell me you're on the couch. Don't you don't want to be there, do you? But that's the truth. So here it is. Never lose focus of the cross. Never, ever, ever. I, I put, left that cross in here for a reason. Let me, show, let me tell you what kind of man Tommy Hughes is. He came in. He helped me get all the, the crosses set up. And then I guess it was the other day, what, Thursday? You was get, or Friday, you was getting ready to leave and go out of town. And he said, Brian, I got all them crosses loaded back up. And he said, I'm ready to deliver them. Went to them back to Living Grace. And went them out here at Robinson Creek. And, and I said, Tommy, I need that big cross back in the sanctuary. He looked at me and he said, all right. <laughs> all right. And that's where it was at. But what I'm trying to tell you is this. If you really want a blessing from the Lord, serve people. You want to find God? You find a hurting person. Mm. Boy, what a preach. You want to find Jesus Christ? You find somebody who is hurting and you'll find Jesus Christ. That's why deaconship works so good. They take care of people. Tonight, this is the prayer of a deacon. Now, I'm, I'm going to give this to you guys. The prayer of a deacon is this. Come to my assistance, my God and my Lord, that I may do for you all that you ask. Strengthen me in adversity, and do not let me succumb to my feelings or worthlessness. Listen to this. Help me feel in my heart all that you speak to me and help me understand. May I be to others what they need. Listen to me. May I be to others what they need. A body to work when others cannot. A heart to love those who are forgotten. And boy, that's so true. How many people have been forgotten? A shoulder to console those whose soul is in need. A deacon is a smile to brighten the, the most sober of, the, of your children. A mouth to proclaim your love. Let me be to you. Listen, listen to this. Lord, let these deacons be to you as a brush is to a painter. Let these deacons be to you as a brush is to a painter. Worthless without you. But capable of transforming the human heart by the power of your mercy. Lord, send me, if you need me, to touch others as you would touch them, to hold them as you would, to love them as only as you can. Make my heart like yours, God, that I may forgive everything and love beyond my own human frailty. Listen, it's so good. Come alive within me, God. Come alive within me that I may die to myself 
so that you may feel my very being. Let me serve others as you would serve them. That in doing so, I may serve you. Listen, do not let me fail. God, Tommy, you said this the other night. You said, boy, I don't want to fail the Lord. Listen to this. I thought about you. Do not let me fail, O Lord, or lead your people astray. Allow me, listen to this, allow me to live in your presence today that tomorrow I may die in your hands. And may you raise me one day that I may touch your face, hallelujah, and live in your glory. That's a deacon's prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Tommy and Brother Mark and Brother Gary to come forward at this time. I probably could have asked everybody here tonight, what is a deacon? Everybody's favorite word is a servant. But so often, so often, we don't see that. This is their night. This is the night that we have set them aside as, as deacons of this church. We have commissioned the church. We have commissioned you. We have anointed you. We've prayed blessings over you. And most certainly, God's hand is upon your life. Amen. Tonight, it is my privilege and my honor as the pastor of this church to present Brother Tommy Hughes and Missy Hughes as deacons and deaconess of this church. Tommy. May God empower you and give you the strength to get through each day as a servant of the Most High God. Congratulations, man of God. Love you. Love you, Love you God. Love you, Brother Mark and uh, Renee, I praise the Lord for uh, what God is doing. God's hand is upon your two life, and uh, it's... So good report and full of the Spirit tonight, I just praise the Lord for you. But it is my joy and my honor of the pastor of this church to commission you as deacon and deaconess of this church. Congratulations, and may God give you the strength, the power, and the wisdom to make godly decisions the rest of the days of your life. God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. Congratulations, gal. Brother Gary. And Annetta, known you for a long time. It's no surprise tonight that you're standing in front of me. Really, it's no surprise that all you men and women are standing here. Uh, it's my joy, my honor, to present you as deacon and deaconess of this church. We love you, we support you, and may God each day fill you with his grace and his love and his joy and his mercy to make God decisions for the rest of your life. Congratulations, man of God. Love you. If you would, stand to your feet in this house and give God praise, honor, and glory for what He done in here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Haywood, I'm going to ask him to uh, close in prayer tonight. And, uh, and then after when we're done, we do have food. Baptists, we meet. We what? <laughs> Y'all are so good. Uh, so <laughs> we meet, we eat. So please don't rush off. And then Miss Mary is wanting to take a picture of everybody up here. So all the deacons and new deacons and all of all this stuff that happened tonight. So please stay up here. Okay, so Brother Haywood, why don't you close us out? Yeah. Let's bow. God, tonight I just thank you for setting the example of what it means to be a servant. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us how to serve and how to find fulfillment in life as we bow down to you and, and to try to, to be your ministers of the gospel. Thank you, God, for entrusting us with the privilege of sharing the message of Jesus Christ. Tonight, I thank you for the leaders in our church, those who, who teach, those who drive a bus, those who fix a meal, those who work in Sunday school and Wednesday nights. Thank you, God, for our pastors. Thank you for our deacons, and tonight I just pray your special blessing on Tommy and Missy and uh, Gary and Annetta and uh, Mark and Renee. Thank you, God. Help me out, Lord. 
Thank you for these three special men and their wives. Lord, I just pray your anointed blessing on them that they'll be faithful servants for you and help us to be supportive, to lift them up, and to be all you've called us to be. Bless our time of fellowship now, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.